A young man, Lu Mingfei, receives a message from a woman telling him to go to the airport and find the CC line. Mingfei is given a subway card and is informed that there is a subway at the airport. He is supposed to go to the subway and take the train going to Castle College. Mingfei arrives at the airport and asks the security guard where he can find the CC line, but the guard shrugs him off, believing that he is a beggar. Mingfei soon discovers that everyone else is treating him like a beggar, and he realizes that the usual beggars in America dress like he does. This makes it more obvious that he is from China. He is about to give up when a young man, Finger Von Franks, comes over to Mingfei. He tells Mingfei that he is also going to Castle College and knows the way forward. Finger leads Mingfei to the subway and tells him that the normal degree takes four to five years, but he has been repeating, and this will be his eighth year in the school. He is now an FRA. He adds that the train is the only accessible route to the college. While waiting for the train, Mingfei goes into a trance where he sees an unknown young man who calls him his brother. Before he can get more information, Finger wakes him and says that the train is almost here. They are to confirm their identity with a security guard by swiping their identity card. Mingfei approaches the guard and introduces himself. The guard goes crazy when he realizes that Mingfei is the newest rank being admitted into the school. Finger also joins the guard and says Mingfei should have been picked up by a plane instead of the train. The guard says all he would have done is just swipe his card, and the train would have arrived without any delay. Mingfei does that, and the subway lights up immediately. The system announces that the train is inbound. In no time, the train arrives. The train door opens, and Mingfei is welcomed by Professor Gundren. On the train to the college, the professor gives Mingfei a confidential form to sign before he is briefed about everything he needs to know. After signing the form, Mingfei is informed that the school is studying dragons and how to slay them. People in the outside world believe that dragons are a myth, and this is what Mingfei believes too. Just then, he has a soul vision again and sees the boy from before. The boy tells him that everything he just heard is the truth. The boy narrates that the original ancestor of the Dragon Raja, the Black Emperor Nidhogg, was killed thousands of years ago on his own throne. The mountain was filled with ice, and the man who killed the dragon put his massive corpse on the top of the mountain. The day he died is what signaled what they now call the New Age. The people celebrated when the dragon died. Mingfei asks the boy if he is related to the dragon, but he says no. After returning to his normal state, a man named Musashi Toyama comes in to show Mingfei proof that dragons exist. They show him a scale, but this is not enough to convince Mingfei. They decide to show Mingfei a baby dragon that was found in 1796. The baby dragon has been in a sleeping state since it was found. Mingfei goes closer to the dragon, and it suddenly starts moving. The dragon tries to break out of the glass container, but fails. It eventually goes back to its sleeping state. The professor says Mingfei's bloodline must have awakened the dragon. He adds that they were lucky to have changed the nano container last year, or it would have been disastrous if the dragon escaped. Moments later, they arrive at their destination, and the professor officially welcomes Mingfei to Castle College. As the professor and Mingfei walk through the hallway, the professor informs Mingfei that research has shown them that there are high-level dragons sleeping across China. Mingfei notices that there are no students around and asks why. The professor realizes his mistake and immediately tells Mingfei to get down. The professor has forgotten that today is Liberty Day, and the students usually participate in war games. The two clubs in the school, which are Lionheart Society and Union Students, always go head-to-head -head in the war games. The Lionheart Society leader is Chu Ziong, and the Union's president is Caesar Gattuso. Suddenly, students from both clubs appear from all angles, and a battle ensues. Professor Gundren gets shot in the process and falls to the ground. Some minutes later, the two clubs are only left with their leaders and a sniper from each club. Caesar and Zihong decide to have a one-on-one. -on -one. The duel begins, and all Mingfei can do is watch from the sidelines while having the thought that everything going on is real. Mingfei is about to get shot when the surviving sniper, Nono, a redhead girl, saves him. Believing that Nono is dead, Mingfei is enraged. He picks up a gun and rifle and shoots the other sniper in the head and fires a devastating shot at both Zihong and Caesar. Mingfei is still wallowing in his sadness when he hears the trumpet go off. Medics rush to the battlefield and start attending to everyone. Another teacher, Professor Manstein, shows up and starts complaining about how expensive everything is. 
Ming Fei is still trying to figure out what is going on when Gundren appears beside him. Ming Fei gets scared that he has seen a ghost, but Gundren assures him that he is alive. Gundren then explains everything to Ming Fei. He adds that the bullets used during the battle are only filled with sedatives. All the students finally get up, and Professor Manstein says he is going to call Principal Anju and have him stop the war games. He complains to the principal that the cost of renovation is high, but the principal tells him to leave the students and let them carry out any activity that they want. Andrew says the school will pay for any damages. The principal tells the students that he won't be able to make it back this year and asks Man Stein to give Ming Fei the phone. Andrew welcomes Ming Fei to the school and also teases him about knocking out two S rank students. Andrew says he is not surprised because Ming Fei himself is an S rank junior student. It is revealed that Zi Hong is of pure blood, while Caesar is of hybrid blood. After ending the call, Anju and another professor named Mance are seen discussing how they need to train the students and get them battle ready. However, Mance argues that what they need is a prodigy that is capable. The duo believes that Zi Hong and Caesar are strong, but they are now considering Ming Fei. Also, they change the discussion to the hill's operation that is slated for the next day. Mance says Zi Hong and Aki are ready to dive into the water, but they need to be careful not to wake the dragon sleeping there. Back at the school, Ming Fei gets to his dorm room and discovers that Finger will be his roommate. Finger takes Ming Fei on a tour through the school. He explains to him that there are several gambling skills, and this is what aids them in practicing magic. A student trying to do magic loses control of his yandling and lets loose a water monster, but a teacher steps in to stop the water from going on a rampage. Ming Fei finds himself in front of a tree where half its leaves are withered while the other half are nourished. Finger informs Ming Fei that legend has it that Nidhogg, the Black Dragon Emperor, was defeated under the tree. The tree now stands as the college symbol. Gundren finds the two standing in front of the tree and asks Ming Fei to follow him back to his dormitory. They get to the dormitory and Gundren gives Ming Fei his student identity card. Gundren tells Ming Fei that he will participate in the 3E test tomorrow and will be sent home if he fails. However, his memories will be wiped out before being sent home. Gundren says it is time to evaluate his bloodline. He brings out a recording box that has the roar of Nidhogg stored in it. The recording is known as Imperium Yandling. Gundren plays the sound and expects Ming Fei to feel something, but he doesn't. Ming Fei remains just as normal as he is and does not give out any roar. Gundren believes that Ming Fei's human genes have suppressed his dragon genes. Just then, he remembers something and rushes out of his room before he can mention anything else to Ming Fei. After Gundren's departure, Finger puts it on the school news network that Ming Fei didn't react to the Imperium. Finger then tells Ming Fei that he can help him cheat and pass the 3E test. Later on, Zi Hong and Caesar find out that Ming Fei didn't resonate with the Imperium. Shortly afterward, Gundren calls Man Stein to meet him in the library. Man Stein and Gundren go through the books to find out why Ming Fei didn't resonate. They come up with a theory that Ming Fei comes from the bloodline of the White Emperor who challenged Nidhogg during a fierce battle. The White Emperor lost to the Black Emperor, and all his descendants were buried with him. Manstein says if there is any possibility that Ming Fei is a descendant of the White Emperor, he needs to be a subject of research. However, Gundren says he doesn't want Ming Fei to be a lab rat because he is a good kid. Manstein says he will not talk about the issue to anyone until Ming Fei takes the 3E test. If he doesn't pass the test, Manstein says he will have no choice but to report what they discovered. He adds that he will make sure Ming Fei is treated humanely. Later that night, an unknown person tells the school's AI Norma to allow Ming Fei to pass the 3E test. The next day, Ming Fei arrives at the test hall. Finger has already given him all the answers to the questions they will ask. Finger says they will play a recording that will throw them into a soul vision. The test begins and the rest of the students go into a funny state. Ming Fei looks to his side and discovers that only he and a blonde-haired girl are not acting funny. Ming Fei is busy writing down the answers when he falls into his usual trance state. He sees the boy again and asks for his name. He reveals that his name is Lu Minx. Ming Fei is surprised because his cousin also has that same name. Lu says Ming Fei is not like everyone else and also reveals that Ming Fei is in his own vision. Ming Fei comes back to reality and sees Nono standing in front of him. Nono reveals that Ming Fei has been sleeping for two hours and he also drew nine answers instead of eight. Nono says he has no worries because he surely passed the test. 
Ming Fei gets back to his room, and Finger congratulates him on passing the test. He asks if Ming Fei has picked his classes. Finger asks if he picked Professor Mance's class. He then reveals that Mance has been on a mission for the past two weeks. There are reports that he found traces of an ancient dragon elsewhere. Mance is leading the exploration of a ruined underwater city. Aki and Ishang gear up and dive into the water. Ishang and Aki manage to find a gate to the forgotten village. Mance informs Anju that they have found a city made of bronze, but they need the key to enter. Mance says it must be the palace of one of the Dragon Kings, Norton. Anju permits Mance to use the key. Mance enters a room and collects a baby with pure dragon blood. He gears up with the baby and dives into the water. He gets to the gate and uses the baby as a key to open it. He gives Aki and Ishang their instructions and returns to the boat ship with the baby. After returning to the ship, Mance tells Norma to make a full scan of the city. Aki and Shang get to a chamber where they see a huge bronze pillar. Shang offers to explore further while Aki stays there and takes pictures of the pillar and the surroundings. Aki starts to take pictures with her mask and relays them back to the ship. Moments later, Aki starts to lose consciousness, but Shang arrives in time and wakes her up. He tells Aki that he found a vase that they will take back to the ship. Shang says there might be a baby dragon sleeping inside of it. Suddenly, the city's security system gets activated when Aki touches a small statue. The layout of the city starts to change, and the duo makes a run for it. They start to run through all the obstacles in front of them in an attempt to make it back to the ship. Shang says Aki must have restarted the whole city when she touched the statue. Back at Castle College, the students ranking A and above are summoned to the emergency room. Before Ming Fei leaves his room, he falls into a trance where Ming's tells him what he will need. Ming's gives him a cheat code to solve any map that he finds. Ming Fei gets to the hall and sees other students getting ready to be briefed. Also, the students are informed that two members of the Execution Bureau are trapped in dragon ruins and need their help to find a way out as soon as possible. Ming Fei notices the blonde haired girl from the test is also in the room, meaning she is A rank. The professors inform the students that they have 20 minutes to solve the layout of the city before Aki and Shang's oxygen runs out. The students are implored to do everything to save their comrades. The students begin work immediately, and the professors hope they will find a solution before time runs out. Ming Fei remembers the code Ming's gave him and uses it to decipher the map. The code manages to interpret the map, and everyone is surprised when Ming Fei solves it. The map interpretation is immediately sent to the ship to help Aki and Shang find their way out. They look through the map and find out that the only path to escape is to go down and exit from the city base. Professor Mance is happy that the duo has enough oxygen to make it out of the city. On the other hand, Aki is sad that they won't make it out because there is not enough oxygen. Shang assures her that they will make it out on time, and this lifts Aki's mood. Moments later, Mance realizes that they didn't calculate the oxygen in time that will take the duo back up. They only calculated the oxygen needed to exit the ruins. Mance figures out that they might not make it back up. He orders the ship to be lowered down to almost the surface of the water, and the lifeboats deployed. Back at the college, Ming Fei receives a call from his friend Old Tang. Tang notices that Ming Fei is in a bad mood and encourages him to hope for the best even in bad situations. At the ship, Rescuers have been deployed to try and look for Aki and Shang. Mance is about to give up when the team informs him that they have found someone. Aki manages to surface from the water and deliver the vase to Mance. She tells Mance that Shang sacrificed himself for her. Just then, Aki gets pulled away by an unknown creature. The creature starts to chase the ship, and Mance brings out a rifle to kill the creature. After firing several rounds without eliminating the creature, Missiles are fired into the water, and the creature eats them up. The missiles are detonated inside the creature, and they assume that they have eliminated it. Suddenly, Mance's assistant gets impaled by an arm stretching out of the water. Mance finally confirms that it is a dragon, and the dragon is even laughing at them. They want to detonate the rest of the ammunition inside the dragon, but Mance says it will release the hot air towards them just like dragon flames. Mance orders the ship to move at high speed toward the dam. They plan to put the dam between them before detonating the missiles. The dragon chases after them, but they manage to make it to the dam. They detonate the bombs and manage to pin the dragon between the dam walls. But one of the dragon's teeth comes flying and impales Mance. 
Now at the college, the principal informs the students that the ship has landed safely. Everyone thanks Mingfei for a job well done. After leaving the emergency room, Zihang approaches Mingfei and asks him to join the Lionheart Club, but Mingfei reluctantly rejects. Zihang says he has no grudge against him no matter the club he chooses. Zihang is very sure that Caesar will also ask him to join the Union students. Later on, doves are released from the church, and Zihang says it's a sign that they have lost someone. On the ship, Mance reports all his findings to the principal before dying. He also tells the principal to tell students that he is on another mission to prevent their moods from going down. Enju tells his comrade that the vase they found has been sent to the college, and they will try to find out what is inside. Mance draws his last breath as he tells Enju to find Nono, a new mentor. Up next, Mingfei receives an email from Caesar inviting him to a ball that night. Mingfei is reluctant to go because he doesn't have formal attire, but Finger says he can rent one at the drama club. Later that night, Mingfei and Finger arrive at the venue for the ball. Nono also arrives at the event, and she is personally welcomed by Caesar. It turns out that it is Nono's birthday. The event kicks off with a dance, but Mingfei and Finger have no day to dance with. The duo ends up dancing with each other. While Finger is enjoying the moment, it turns out to be a hell show for Mingfei. After the dance, Caesar gives a strong speech and uses the opportunity to invite Mingfei to the club. Mingfei is confused, and Caesar says he has the option to think about the offer before giving him an answer. After the speech, the blonde-haired girl from the 3E test stands up to dance with Mingfei. Mingfei doesn't know how to dance, so the girl leads him on. When Mingfei asks for her name, she tells him to call her Zero. After the beautiful dance, the girl leaves the hall. Once the girl leaves, Mingfei also leaves the hall. He sees Nono outside and about to leave with Caesar's car. Mingfei approaches her to wish her a happy birthday. Nono says she is tired, and that's the reason she is leaving the party. She asks if Mingfei can drive, and he says yes. She tells Mingfei to drive her to the top of the mountain so she can relax. Just as the duo leaves for the mountain, the school is invaded by a group of armed men. The students are informed to arm themselves and defend the school. On the way to the mountain, Mingfei enters a trance again where he sees Ming sitting beside him in the car. Mingfei is scared because finding himself in dreamland means he might drive them into a ditch in real life. However, Ming shows him the way as they drive along. He asks if Mingfei is ready to confess to Nono. Ming then gives Mingfei another cheat code called, Show Me the Flowers. They finally arrive at the mountaintop, and the duo gets down from the car. Back at the school, it is revealed that the invaders might be after the vase that was just brought to the school. One of the invaders is seen communicating with a woman who appears to be their commander. Shortly afterward, some of the intruders are captured and restrained. Manstein says they will need the barrier that controls their powers to be lifted so they can search for intruders more effectively. Manstein calls his father, who is the night watchman, to lift the barrier. His father agrees and lifts the barrier to give them total control of their powers. Up in the hills, Nono tells Mingfei that she is aware that Mance is dead, but they didn't want to tell the students. She explains to Mingfei that Mance has given her a secret code in case he dies. He already told her that it will be announced that he was going on a new mission. Mingfei asks if Nono is sad, but she says no. Back at the school, once the barrier is lifted, the captain of the intruders uses her power to hide herself and her guys to avoid detection. At the same time, Manstein uses his void snakes to search for the intruders. Gundren says it's up to the students to stop the intruders because their main men are not in the school. Meanwhile, one of the intruders, called 13, is going solo. Their employer has given him a different mission from the others. 13 is informed that his next stop is the wine cellar. 13 makes his way to the wine cellar and opens the inner door with a security card that has been provided for him. In the church, Caesar activates his yandling, which allows him to see and hear everything around him. Caesar calls Zihong and asks if his own trouble has arrived, but he says no. Caesar says he is about to engage his own share of troubles. The instructors then order the Lionheart Society to evacuate the library, but Zihong should remain there. Just then, the intruders enter the church, but it doesn't take them long to realize that they have been caught. The captain of the intruders introduces herself as Saki Tokum. It turns out that she is Aki's sister. Caesar offers his condolences, but Mai says there is no need for it because she and Aki were not that close. 
Mai plays a song and says they will start their fight once the music she is playing ends. However, one of the intruders tries to act funny, but Caesar, being a strong opponent, knocks out all the intruders, leaving Mai. He wonders why the intruders are using sedative bullets instead of fatal ones. Mai tells him that her job is to slow down Caesar, while another girl also slows down Xiong. This is because the duo is currently the main threat to their operation. Now in the library, a girl wearing a mask enters, and she is the one who is to fight Xiong. She doesn't even bring a weapon, and the instructors watching wonder if she is powerful enough to challenge Zihong without a weapon. Zihong activates his Yandling, which is a royal blaze and very rare to have. All the area he is standing in erupts into a fiery furnace. The professors realize the reason Zihong's Yandling has been a secret to everyone except the principal and his supervisor. This must have been the reason why everyone else is asked to evacuate the library. To everyone's greatest surprise, the girl is armed with the same power as Zihong. Meanwhile, Thirteen finds himself in the ice chambers where he runs into one of Norma's personalities, Eva. Eva says she can't stop him because he used a high clearance card. The duo has a chat, and Eva even points Thirteen to where he wants to go next. As he makes his way to his next location, Thirteen is informed that his payment has increased to 5 million. He falls into a reservoir and loses his phone before he can get the last instruction. He swims forward and sees a door. He is still contemplating opening the door when a voice calls him brother, and he accidentally opens the door. Back on the mountain, Nono informs Mingfei that she was the one who invited him to the party and not Caesar. She then asks Mingfei to join the student union to prevent him from thinking Caesar set her up to the task. She reveals that she wants Mingfei to join the club so she can look after him herself. It turns out that Caesar and Nono have an arranged marriage engagement. Nono changes the topic and tells Mingfei that someone usually gives her a birthday present every year, and she doesn't know what the person would give her this year. Seeing that Nono's mood is down, Mingfei uses the cheat code Mings gave him, and the environment receives a bright mood. Music starts to play, fireworks go off, and everything ends with a fireworks decoration of Happy Birthday Nono. This lifts Nono's mood, and as she puts her head down, a tear falls off. Mingfei realizes that Nono was referring to her late mother, who usually buys her gifts. Now in the school, after Thirteen opens the door, the water currents push him into another chamber where he finds himself face to face with a shark. Surprisingly, the shark swims without attacking Thirteen. Thirteen reveals that there is something about him that scares away animals. He makes his way to the research institute that is hidden under the college. He uses the security card with him to access the door inside the facility. Anju is briefing the scientists about the vase. After making a scan of the vase, they discover that it contains a dragon embryo. After careful observation, they realize that there were supposed to be two embryos inside, but one has escaped. The scientists want to dissect the vase to quickly check what is inside, but Anju stops them. He threatens them and instructs everybody to vacate the room. This gives Thirteen the opportunity to infiltrate the room without any problem. Just as Thirteen gets close to the vase, he has a vision of a kid calling him brother again. He moves closer to the vase and starts taking some pictures. The vision happens again, and this jump scares Thirteen. He decides to leave without taking the vase with him. Meanwhile, a bottle had fallen from his pocket when he jumped away from the vase. His final instructions were to pour the solution inside the bottle on the vase, take out its contents, and return. He left without doing so, because he didn't get the final instructions when he lost his phone. Moments later, an unknown figure, who is likely Anju, enters the room. He picks up the bottle and pours its content into the vase. He then cuts his hand and pours the blood over the vase also. As Anju leaves, he says his blood and the dragon are in the hands of Nidhogg. Now in the church, Caesar tells Mai that if she manages to eliminate him with three tries, she will be considered the winner of the duel. Mai goes after Caesar, but he easily dodges her first attack. She attacks again, and Caesar counters her. She makes the third attack more difficult, but Caesar manages to block the attack again. However, Mai tries to be a cheater and pulls out a gun. Just then, a little kid mouths some words in the distance that cause an explosion that breaks Mai and Caesar apart. They look around and see melted footsteps printed on the floor that lead outside. Caesar is surprised that someone could pass him by without him catching a whiff of it. Caesar says he heard the elevator sound. Judging from the movement, he says the elevator came from the basement. 
My wonder is what sort of monster they are keeping at the school. On their way back to school, Nono and Mingfei realize that there is trouble. However, Nono tells Mingfei not to worry because she is sure that everything will be settled before they even get back. At the school, Zihong and the other girl are still fighting, and the professors notice that the girl is even pulling her punches because her aim is to slow down Zihong and not kill him. On the other hand, Thirteen is trying to escape the school on a bike when Mingfei and Nono run into him with their car. Mingfei goes close to apologize for the trouble when he and Thirteen recognize each other. Apparently, Thirteen is old Tang, Mingfei's friend. The scene quickly turns into a fake hostage situation to help Tang escape. Their plan is interrupted when they see a kid with an energy shield around him trying to get close. The guards start to shoot at the kid, but the energy shield around him melts the bullets. All their efforts to stop him prove useless and only make him angrier. Zihong and the girl stop their fight when they discover that there is greater danger at the school. The girl commends Zihong and leaves. Manstein calls his father to bring down the barrier again, but he says it will be useless because they are fighting against a first-generation dragon, the King of Bronze and Fire. Mai calls her employer to inform her of the recent developments. Mai sends a video to her, and when she checks it, she discovers that the kid is not the Dragon King Norton. Mai's employer says the kid they are looking at is Norton's brother, Constantine. Nono Tang and Mingfei are seen hiding behind some pillars. Tang reveals that he got the order to steal the vase online and didn't even know that he was infiltrating Mingfei's school. Just then, Finger finds them behind the pillars and gives out a loud scream. This exposes them to Constantine, who has been looking for them. Constantine shows up, but the group runs away once again. Shortly afterward, Mai gets the information from her employer that the freak of bullets that they use as sedatives can have small effects against Constantine. All the guards and students immediately switch to freak of bullets and start to attack Constantine. Mingfei Tang and Finger find a pool and jump inside to hide from Constantine. The trio hears Constantine getting close and decides to fully submerge themselves inside the pool. Moments later, Mingfei raises his head back up and finds himself in a red pool. He climbs out of the pool and notices that his environment is different. He believes that this is one of Ming's visions and starts to look for him. He runs into Constantine and immediately recognizes that he is the dragon kid chasing them. When he sees a building from the Bronze City map, he gets scared and shifts back, but Ming's appears out of nowhere and kicks Constantine away. Ming's tells Constantine to leave his brother alone and find himself his own brother. Mingfei wakes back to the real world to discover that his friends have left him at the pool. Just then, Principal Anju arrives and asks Mingfei to follow him. He takes Mingfei to an Overwatch tower and gives him a rifle and a bullet. He says the bullet is made from a philosopher's stone and is capable of killing any supreme dragon. All they need is to get a clear shot into its eyes. Anju says he will use his yandling called Time Zero to slow down everything around and give Mingfei a chance to shoot Constantine. Minutes later, Constantine transforms into his dragon form. Anju commends the students for their excellent work and tells them he will take it from here on. He uses his yandling to attack Constantine and slow down time. Mingfei manages to take the shot with the help of little bro Mings. Once the dragon has been shot, the principal tells everyone to switch to live ammunition because the dragon is now weak. The dragon flies toward Tang and shields him from all the bullets. The dragon calls him brother before finally dying. Overwhelmed by what he just witnessed, Tang begins to remember his life as a dragon. He remembers that Constantine is his twin brother. He gets very sad and angry at the same time, prompting him to finally reveal himself as the Dragon King Norton. Later on, Manstein's father asks Anju why he didn't just kill Tang when he hadn't transformed into his dragon self. Anju says he is tired of sealing Dragon Kings away and wants to terminate them once and for all. He adds that he is over a hundred years old now and needs someone that will carry on with his tasks. Anju's hyper blood has allowed him to stay alive and younger than his peers. He then reveals that dragons are always angry when they lose a loved one, and this will prevent them from careful thinking. Anju is pretty confident that Norton's anger will be his grave. Anju's plan is to eliminate the four dragon kings and finally eliminate the Emperor Nidhogg. The next day, Finger and Mingfei are seen in their dormitory talking about the events that happened yesterday. Finger says the school's executives are back now and they have nothing to worry about. Mingfei reveals that he will be joining the student union. Just then, a student arrives to deliver his club card to him. 
The student says Nono was sure that Mingfei would join the club and had his card prepared already. Shortly afterward, Principal Anju informs Caesar that he has a mission for his club. He is also required to take Mingfei with him on the expedition. After receiving the task from the principal, Anju calls for Mingfei. He informs Mingfei about the expedition they are to go on. Mingfei is scared and says he doesn't want to go, but Nono enters and convinces him that she will take care of him just like a big sister does. Mingfei accepts to join them on the mission, but Caesar says they need to get him ready within the next two months. For the next two months, Mingfei is trained in several aspects, which include diving, martial arts, endurance and stamina, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the rest. After his training is complete, Mingfei feels discouraged and gives Finger his S rank card to buy anything he wants in case he dies. Typical Finger, he immediately starts to order things with the card. Mingfei is surprised to see how Finger is behaving, but he turns out to be wrong when Finger returns the card. Finger encourages him and assures him that everything will be okay. This sparks a new sense of confidence inside Mingfei. Finger reveals that couples are not allowed to dive together, but the reason Aki and Shang went in together was because they never announced their relationship officially. Mingfei realizes that Caesar and Nono won't be able to dive together for the mission. Meanwhile, Norton has summoned one of his servant dragons, Samson, to prepare him for the task ahead. Soon afterward, Mingfei, Nono, Zero, and Caesar are taken to the ship for their mission. The name of their mission is Operation Bronze. Manstein informs them that the ship is now better armed than before and no ordinary dragon can take them on. He reveals that they now have an advanced torpedo that can effectively damage a dragon. Their plan is to re-enter the Bronze City and destroy it before it falls into Norton's hands. They believe that Norton will have to go back to the city and transform into a cocoon so that he can emerge with his full strength. Manstein informs them of the diving plans. Nono and Mingfei will be Team 1, and they will dive first to find the cocoon and blow it to Kingdom Come. Nono and Mingfei gear up, and Nono tells him all the details he needs to know about the suit. He is informed that a consciousness line is attached to them, which the ship can use to drag them back in case of any problem. Moments later, the duo dives into the water. Upon getting to the gate, Mingfei is supposed to pour the pure blood inside a container on it to activate it. Just then, the gate bites his finger, but let's go when it takes a good amount of dragon blood. The gate opens, and Mingfei uses a piece of clothing to wrap his finger before they dive into the city. They arrive at a corridor where there is no water, and the duo discovers that the air is breathable. They open their masks to conserve oxygen and continue with their task. With the help of a die given to them by Manstein, they are able to know the right way to go. They keep following the die to wherever it takes them. Mingfei and Nono walk through a chamber that depicts the evolution of dragons and of man. Moments later, they find themselves at the same pillar which Aki and Shang found the last time they were there. After leaving where the pillar is located, they move forward to find a chamber where a big statue is built in honor of Norton. Nono deduces that the king's palace cannot be in the same place where he receives sacrifices. They dive into the water below them and get to the bottom. They find out that they are standing in a graveyard of people that have waged war against the Dragon King thousands of years ago, when the city had not been submerged in water. They find another gate and use Mingfei's blood to access it. This causes them to lose connection with the ship because their consciousness line has been disconnected. Caesar and Manstein immediately use their powers in an attempt to find their comrades. Meanwhile, Nono and Mingfei fall into an unexplored part of the city. They see a building in front of them and go inside to investigate. Nono says she will use her criminal psychology skill to try and get information. After using her psychology skill, Nono discovers that the building they are staying in is Norton's palace and he lived there with his brother thousands of years ago. Nono reveals that the reason she decided to take care of Mingfei is because she believes that she made a mistake recruiting him to the school. She thought Mingfei would stay a day or two and quit. After this, Nono sets a timer and reveals that they have enough time to make it back to the surface. Suddenly, it occurs to them that the lamp inside the building is on and someone must have put it on recently. It dawns on them that Norton is currently in the city, and the duo starts to run away. They get to the gate that brought them in and use it to get back to their previous location. The two get there to discover that someone has removed the consciousness line that they were supposed to use in getting back to the ship. It doesn't take them long to realize that the city has been rebooted everything is starting to fall apart. They go back to the palace to find another gate to get them out. 
Back on the ship, Caesar wants to dive in and look for them, but Manstein cautions him and says they are there to kill the Dragon King. Diving into the water will compromise the purpose of their mission. Now in the water, Nono and Mingfei are still trying to find a way out. Mingfei remembers the cheat code Mings gave him about the map. Mingfei activates the code once again. Just then, they hear Finger's voice speaking to them. Mingfei tells Finger to look at the city of the bronze map that they have and use it to guide them out of the city. It turns out that Mingfei uses Manstein's brain as a signal relay to contact Finger. Finger analyzes the map but doesn't have enough computer access because he is F rank. He suddenly remembers that he has an ace up his sleeve. He contacts Eva, who has been his best buddy, to give him unrestricted access. With his unrestricted access, Finger is able to fully analyze the map. He starts to give Nono and Mingfei the directions they have to follow to get out of the city. Meanwhile, Manstein's brain has overloaded, and he goes out of commission. Caesar assumes control of the ship and hands out instructions to everyone on board. Suddenly, a dragon attacks the ship, and the crew believes that it is Norton. Caesar instructs the ship to move forward at high speed. The dragon chases after them, but Zero soon realizes that Norton is not the one chasing them. They see Norton standing on a hill in the distance. The dragon chasing them goes past them to meet Norton. Upon submerging in water, they discover that the dragon causing them problems is Samson. Samson meets up with Norton, and the Dragon King thanks his loyal servant for his services. Norton kills Samson and fuses with his body. The crew realizes that Norton did this to skip the process of going back into a cocoon to get his full strength. Fusing with Samson is almost as equal to him getting his full strength. Meanwhile, Maya is standing in the distance. She receives instructions from her employer to make sure Norton dies, but Mingfei should be left alive. Back in the water, Nono and Mingfei find Shang's body. They discover that he found a book that he was supposed to take back to the ship, but he couldn't make it because he sacrificed his oxygen for Aki. Nono takes the book and wishes Shang a peaceful and eternal rest. The city starts to come apart at an accelerated level, and Mingfei begins to panic. However, his inner self scolds him and tells him to get himself together. His inner self says he is always depending on someone to save him without ever having put in the work. After getting a lecture from his inner buddy, Mingfei finds the confidence to go on. They soon arrive at a gate, but the city wall has started to fall on them. Mingfei tries to unlock the gate with his blood, but blood has stopped flowing because he has been underwater for so long. He tries to use a knife to cut himself, but panics and drops it. Seeing that the wall is about to crush Nono, Mingfei takes off his mask and uses his teeth to bite his finger. The gate unlocks, and the duo gets swept outside the city. Manstein manages to inform the ship that Nono and Mingfei need help because there has been an oxygen leakage. The ship immediately turns back to its original position and drops a rescue bell into the water. Nono slaps Mingfei out of his unconscious state. Mingfei opens his eyes to find out that he is sharing the same oxygen with Nono because his own suit is broken. The problem they now have is how to get back to the surface with a limited amount of oxygen they have. At that same time, Zihang arrives in a chopper to provide assistance to the team. Back in the water, Nono decides to take off her suit and have Mingfei wear it instead. Nono is an expert diver, so she can still hold out more than Mingfei. The ship continues its journey toward Nono and Mingfei's location. Caesar thinks of a way to fight Norton. Zero gives the idea that they can use the torpedoes against him. All they need to do is make sure that they are at least 100 meters close to him, so that he won't have the time to melt it. The torpedoes will move at the speed of an airplane, and the effect against Norton will be significant. Caesar goes to the ship's deck to take on Norton. Zero reminds Caesar to block his ears because the effect of the explosion will be too much for his ears given that he will be using his abilities at that time. Caesar covers his eyes to enable him to focus on his hearing abilities better. He activates his abilities and fires some high damage rounds at Norton to get him angry. Once he is angry enough, he will focus his attention on Caesar and the torpedo will have a high chance to hit Norton. As the fight rages, Caesar briefly lifts his barrier to give Zihong the chance to also distract the Dragon King. Zihong attacks with the Royal Blaze, but Norton easily negates his attack. This doesn't come as a surprise because Zihong's power comes from Norton. Seeing that the Dragon King is distracted, Caesar orders Zero to launch the torpedo. However, Caesar forgets to cover his ears when the torpedo is heading straight for Norton. The torpedo hits Norton, and it proves to be a devastating attack. 
Norton falls into the ocean, and the crew gets excited that it is over. Caesar's ear starts to bleed, but Zero says a minor surgical operation can fix the damage that has been done. Back in the water, Nono and Mingfei see the diving bell in front of them. They are happy that they finally made it. Nono pushes Mingfei into the bell, but as she is about to enter, Norton shows up and impales Nono with his tail. Mingfei watches Nono dying in front of him while he remembers all their memories together. He thinks about how Nono has always been there for him. This pain of losing Nono pushes Mingfei into the vision land, where he finds himself on a raft. He sees Ming standing beside him. Ming tells him that Nono is slowly dying in the outside world, but he might still have the chance to save her. Mingfei rants about how Nono has always been there for him. Mingfei reveals his desire to protect Nono and stop her from dying. After hearing everything Mingfei has to say, Ming says there is a solution to his problems. He is willing to give Mingfei the cheat codes he needs to defeat Norton and also save Nono. However, there is a catch. Each code gives him the right to a quarter of Mingfei's life. Once he uses four codes, Ming's will own his life. Desperate to save Nono, Mingfei agrees to the deal. Ming's is surprised that Mingfei agreed to the deal. He comments on how Mingfei wouldn't have accepted the deal if it was some thousands of years back. Ming says Nono has really changed Mingfei. Ming's adds that Mingfei has officially fallen into his trap. Ming's then gives him the power to stop Norton from using his Yandling and the power to stop Nono from dying. Ming's also gives Mingfei the power to use any Yandling of his choice, and Mingfei picks Caesar's ability. After getting these powers, Mingfei returns to the bell. He swims towards Nono and heals her, tie her to the bell and sending her to the surface. Once he does this, Ming says it is time to fight Norton. Ming's tells him that the book they found earlier was created by Norton, and it contains the seven sins. Mingfei activates the book and picks two colors, yellow and purple, to fight Norton. Ming's tells him that he just picked the worst two of the seven sins, which will make his fight against Norton a bit more difficult. Mingfei uses the code to stop Norton from using his Yandling, and a fight ensues between the two. As the battle rages on, Norton disappears into the abyss. Mingfei falls into a sad mood and starts thinking of the people who are likely to miss him if he dies. Ming's pulls him to the vision land and gives him a pep talk, reminding him that Mingfei's restriction on Norton's Yandling is slowly fading away. Receiving words of encouragement from his brother, Mingfei finally manages to activate his own Yandling, which gives him more strength and speed. Accompanied by Caesar's Yandling, Mingfei manages to locate Norton and launches a devastating attack that pushes him down the ocean. He is about to terminate Norton when he realizes that Norton is the same person as his buddy Tang. Mingfei hesitates, and this gives Norton the opportunity to start choking him out. However, Mings provides a helping hand by delivering a dagger to Mingfei and forces him to push the dagger into Norton's back. As Mingfei floats back to the surface, he remembers how good Tang was to him, and how Tang was the only one who believed in him when no one else did. Mingfei sheds bitter tears as he continues to make his ascent. Back on the ship, Nono finally wakes up, and the crew gathers around to clap for her and Caesar. Zero notices Mingfei surfacing in the distance and swims over to help him, dragging him back to the ship. Mai, who has been standing on the sidelines, sees an already weakened and dying Norton surface on the water. She uses the Philosopher's Stone Bullet to finish him off and reports back to her employer that the job is complete. Later on, Mingfei is seen meeting with Principal Anju. Anju promises him full marks that semester, but he needs to write a thesis before he can fulfill his promise. He is to write on the shared thrones of the monarch twins. Andrew reveals that Nidhogg created the four kings as a pair of twins each. Andrew believes that Nidhogg did this to make them more powerful. Andrew then tells Mingfei that dragons appear in human form to get empathy from humans. Norton might have lost his memories when he escaped from the vase some years back, but that doesn't keep him from being a dragon king. Anju says he would have rained terror on the world if he had not been stopped. Anju gives Mingfei a picture of Tang when he was still human, but Mingfei tells Anju to hold on to it. Just then, Anju gives Mingfei a letter from his parents. His parents congratulate him on his part in making the mission successful. They also add that they can't wait to be there for him on the day he graduates. This letter brings Mingfei to tears. After reading the letter, the principal asks Mingfei about the details of the mission. He says it was written in the report that after Caesar knocked Norton down, something attacked Nono, but she was miraculously healed, and Mingfei was also spared. 
Ming Fei is about to answer the question when Ming stops him. Andrew says it's okay if Ming Fei is not willing to tell him what happened. Now at the dormitory, Ming Fei and Finger are busy arguing when someone knocks on the door. They open the door and find Caesar. Caesar asks for salt before leaving. Apparently, Caesar and Zi Hong are now living in the room opposite theirs. Nono and Zi Hong's assistant, Susie, have also moved to the next room close to Ming Fei and Finger. Nono has a short discussion with Ming Fei, and it turns out that she doesn't even remember what happened. She only remembers Ming Fei shouting her name and doesn't have the slightest idea that Ming Fei was the one who saved her. To put it short, only Ming Fei knows the full details of what happened. Ming Fei returns to his room and receives mail from an unknown person. He opens the package to find a phone. The phone has been sent to him by Ming's to help in contacting him more easily than dragging him to Vision Land. The phone is also to monitor Ming Fei, so he doesn't go back on their deal. Later on, Anju is going through Ming Fei's three e-test answers. He sees that Ming Fei drew himself sitting at a window beside Ming's. Andrew recognizes Ming's but burns the paper and welcomes Ming Fei to the academy once again.